What was the weirdest thing the weird kid did at your school? A kid I grew up with started wearing homemade chainmail to school our freshman year of high school every day for all four years. He was always pretty odd, but he was nice enough. Plus, we had a few classes together through middle school, and we had connected over a shared love of a few video games. So I felt comfortable asking him why he started wearing it all of a sudden. He proceeded to explain the defensive benefits of chainmail versus both sharp and blunt instruments of harm for like five solid minutes. Daggers, pikes, hammers, even how curved blades like katana and falchions would struggle against it. I basically shrugged and told him, Eh, makes sense. And we both went to our glasses. I don't know what I expected, but I guess it wasn't the basic defensive benefits that armor offers. I love the thought that this guy asked, Hey, why do you wear chainmail? And the kid heard, Hey, why not plate armor, loser? I think that's really funny. I guess OP could have just asked, Hey, why do you wear armor at all? But honestly, I wouldn't want to ruin that kid's fun either. Story 2. Weird kid in elementary was a self-proclaimed alien. Once, while waiting for the bus, she told me, On my planet, we eat people like you, and proceeded to bite me. We later became friends in high school, and she used to give me massages during lunch break in the quad. Just realized now she was likely tenderizing me. Story 3. One girl used to run slash gallop around the playground on her own, pretending she was a horse. This was, by the way, at too old of an age for the rest of us to be doing this. Think 14, 15. She got a medicine degree and is doing her surgical training at the moment. I bumped into her at a hospital after over a decade. All I could think of to say was, do you still love horses? She laughed and said she had her own horse now. Figures. I don't know. Okay, I'm trying to think. So if I were getting surgery and I was told that my surgeon used to gallop around as a horse at the age of 14 and 15, would I, would I be less comfortable with that? Maybe. I don't know. What do you guys think? Story four. He drove around the basketball courts following the lines on an imaginary bus. He would stop to let people on or off the bus and then drive them to their stops and we walked in a line behind him. When he stopped walking, he would mimic the door opening and closing and wouldn't let you on or off if you didn't wait for the signal. Salutations, Ben the bus driver. I hope you achieved your dreams. Hell yeah, Ben. I hope you achieved your dreams too. Also, really nice of the kids to play along. It probably was kind of fun knowing kids at that age. Story 5. Ran out of the class and I guess attempted to leave school or something. A bunch of teachers chased him. I could hear running out in the halls and teachers asking where he went. The door to the class was closed, but there was a window. Quite a bit later, I look up and see him at the little window. He just looks at us, licks the window, and runs away again. And I see a couple of teachers run after him. Story 6. Okay, so I had a kid at my school. Not particularly bad, but just annoyed the everything out of me. Because I was the only one nice to him, he would follow me everywhere, randomly grab me for no reason, hug me, and not give me any personal space. But here comes the worst part. We have school swimming lessons, and you could either get changed in the change room or in the toilets or showers. Since I'm a shy person, I would always use the showers to get changed. Figures he followed me in there, got dressed outside of my door, and just when I was leaving my cubicle, he was just there, dancing naked. I died inside that day. Story 7. The weird kid in my school, who was also a friend of mine, had really bad dry scalp during the winter months. He would vigorously rub his hair to get some relief from the itchiness and in the process would end up with lots of dead skin on his desk. One girl looked over as he was doing this and loudly said, "Ew!" And he, wanting to make a statement, gathered up all of the dead skin in a line-shaped pile and snorted it like a massive line of drugs. He was kicked out of class. I feel like my confusion came through in the way that I read that. A show that I do not read these stories before reading them out loud, I just go for it. That disturbed me. Story 8. I dated the weird kid in high school and even a few years after, and the weirdest thing he did was try to date his cousin while we were together. He also ate grass and him and his friends would talk about the flesh planet. I hated my life back then. Edit. So I should have elaborated that she wasn't his biological cousin. She was his cousin by marriage till the divorce. But they were raised as cousins and she was introduced to me by him and his family as cousins. Also, his whole family knew and supported it and acted like I was the crazy one and that I was ridiculous for being mad about it. His father in particular said he wanted him to be with her so that they could have white babies. I'm black and so is my mom he kept trying to get with. Yes, we live in the South. The rest of the family, however, was obsessed with the fact that we would have beautiful mixed babies. I had serious low self-esteem, low standards, and serious abandonment issues due to trauma in my life at the time, and everyone questioned why I was still with him, even our teachers. But I really try not to judge people. Story 9. This one kid wore cheap button-down collar shirts to school every day, 
and he would only ever button the top button and let the shirt billow around him when he walked. He stated that he was convinced that by doing this every day, he would catch on and he would start a trend in the school and be popular. He was forever alone on that hill. Okay, look, knowing kids though, there was like a 50-50 shot that this worked. Didn't work out for him this time, but I feel like for some other kids somewhere else it could. Story 10. This was in 96-97. We had a bomb threat and all had to go to the football stadium. One of the special ed kids that had downs started the Macarena and had the entire school going. And then this one kid that was dressed weird ran out onto the field with his friend in front of everyone and they started kissing. This was 96-97, so it started a huge mess. People were trying to beat him up and the administrators had to take them away. Meanwhile, there were still some people trying to keep the Macarena alive. It was a strange day. Story 11. My old art teacher told our class a bunch of stories about weird things kids did in her class. Before she worked at our school, she worked as an English teacher at the juvenile court school. All of the kids there had issues, but there was one kid who really stuck out to her. She was assigned to teach him, but the catch was that he had to be in solitary in order to be taught. She was also told that he needed to be watched at all times because he always tried to escape class and usually was successful. When she taught him, there was a guard posted at the door, the windows were locked and boarded up, and the door was kept locked. The only things in the room were his desk, his chair, and her desk. That was so he couldn't hide either. Apparently he was also really good at that. The first time she had to teach this kid, they were put into a solitary room, but it had a closet. The kid went missing, and about three hours later they found him taking a nap at the bottom of the closet. They missed him the first time they checked there. Another time she had to teach him, this time the room had no closet or any other visible places he could hide, she left the room for something, probably to go to the bathroom, and when she got back, the kid was gone. The guard was there the whole time, the room was basically sealed, there was no way he could have gotten out. Once again, there were also no places he could really hide. The school went on lockdown while they tried to find the kid. About two hours pass, and they finally find the kid when he pushes away the paneling on the wall of the classroom and steps out to casually ask if he could go to the bathroom. This kid opened up the goddamn wall and climbed inside to hide, causing no one to be able to find him for hours. He may have behavioral issues and not be the best kid, but if he ever needs to hide or be an escape artist for any reason, I feel like this kid has a pretty good shot. Story 12. My best bud had pottery class with a very strange kid. He would always run like Sonic down hallways and jump over the trash cans. Sometimes other kids would line up trash cans and somehow this guy would completely fly over them. Well, they were in pottery and were supposed to be making a pot, vase, or anything they wanted. Well, anything went a bit too far in this kid's mind. He decided to make an actual spear. I don't know how it got past the teacher, how it was never mentioned or caught on to, but he actually made the spear. It got baked in the oven and hardened, and then the kid sharpened it in class. My bud said once the teacher saw him sharpening it in class one day, he attempted to take it. But the kid went caveman Spongebob on the school and started stabbing at people to keep them away. Pretty sure he ended up running down the hallways being chased by teachers and eventually the SRO. No one was injured, by the way. Story 13. We had an unofficial Harry Potter fan club in high school and Deathly Hollows had just been released. Someone had started this whole gossip slash rumor that Harry dies at the end, which he actually does, but of course a lot goes on after that, which the fan club didn't know about. One of the girls heard about it and tried to unalive herself by throwing herself off the third story. We all saw it and two of the male teachers had to get her off the window while she was screaming, if Harry is dead I have no purpose. Needless to say, she got suspended and the club was disbanded. Okay, but no, 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 why was the club disbanded? What did any of you do wrong? Unless it was like came from internally like the kids. If they were like, this is weird and uncomfortable now, fair enough. But if the administration disbanded the club, that's some garbage. Story 14. Interestingly enough, this weird kid was actually really well liked by people at school. He was on the track team and was an insanely fast distance runner. We were pretty good friends in high school and we went to the same summer fine arts camp every year. Year. The funniest thing he ever did was in geometry class freshman year. Our teacher was explaining planes to us and how because three points always form a plane, a three-legged table would never wobble. Cue the weird kid standing up. Challenge accepted. Next Monday, he comes in dragging a giant table into class. Over the weekend, he had built a table with three legs and springs between the flat tabletop and the legs, so if you put a glass on it, it would wobble and fall over. Our teacher found it so funny that he kept the table in his classroom for the whole year. Story 15. He got mad that he didn't understand how to play a game at lunchtime, so he started hitting and punching the nearest person to him, which happened to be me. When I shoved him away and asked him what the hell he was doing, he whipped out his dong, charged at me, and when I shoved him away from me again, he started crying and ran away with his member still sticking out. Story 16. Our weird kid wore the trench coat and the giant backpack everywhere. He was in my math class. He was a grade below, so he was smart and we were the dumb class. 
I treated him with respect and stood up for him if someone bullied him. He would let me cheat off his math tests, but if he saw anyone else peeking, he would start hissing at them and barking. I thought the kid was great. One day, he just disappeared and we had a school-wide lockdown. The code was cleared and he never came back to class. I saw him a few years later and I was like, Hey buddy, what's up? One day you were just gone. Yeah, they expelled me because they thought I was a danger. Wow, that's crazy, but that's BS, man. Don't worry, you would have been safe. He said it straight-faced and I thanked him and went on my way. Still see him from time to time and say hello and, uh, I hope he's doing well. Well, that's one way to scare someone, yeah. Not that he meant to scare him. Just, uh, wow, what a, what a thing to say. Yeah, man, it's crazy that they expelled me because they thought I was a danger, but don't worry, you would have been safe. I would do a mental double take on that one for sure. Story 17. Had this weird kid in my class who was otherwise okay, but would just do really unexplainable stuff. He once opened his lunchbox in class and threw the contents right onto the overhead ceiling fan. It was something liquidy and greenish. It hit the spinning fan, splashed down on all of us, the walls, the board. The poor teacher got the worst rain down on his face. As a punishment, the entire class was made to clean the classroom. Surprisingly, we weren't mad at him for it. We all had a real good laugh. On the second to last sentence, I was like, oh, the kids must have been mad at this kid. Nope, immediately proven wrong. That's what I get for assuming. Story 18. During my final exams, I sat two seats in front and two seats to the side of the weird kid. I finished my paper with about 15 minutes to spare and absentmindedly looked around the room. My eyes landed on him. He had a styrofoam cup sitting upside down on a pencil. Like, the pencil was wearing a hat. He was hitting the cup so it spun around on the pencil. Meanwhile, he was silently screaming at it and slightly headbanging. I think his mind was at a silent heavy metal concert. Story 19. We had a kid who liked to pretend he was an actual Jedi. I remember one time before gym class he was meditating in the locker room when one of the big football players started to yell at him that he wasn't a Jedi. He was unflinching. The saddest part, his last name was Bates. And so it didn't take people long to call him Master Bates. I actually went to church with this kid and his senior year at youth gathering he admitted to everyone that he wasn't actually a Jedi. We were shocked. Story 20. For elementary school, I was the weird kid. I didn't talk until I was five, and when I started I had maybe a 20-word vocabulary, and only spoke when spoken to for about three to four years. But at age five, when I just started talking, the local 10-year-old genius, who was also our neighbor, was actually a genius, graduated at 12 or something like that, walked up to me. He said, The answer to every question can be found through observing. And then walked off. That's it. That's all he said. I, on the other hand, was and still am an absolute idiot. What I interpreted from what he said was, the answer to every question is observing. Now, I knew this kid had the smarts I didn't have. So I took what he said very seriously and unfortunately, very literally. My parents were freaking out. My school had to call my parents multiple times and eventually we had a big meeting. And it landed me in therapy because for nearly a solid year, the only thing I ever said to anyone was observing. Two times two? Observing. What do you want for tea? Observing. What is on the TV? Observing. Why the hell are you such a stupid kid? Observing. Story 21. High school AP English and we're watching Romeo and Juliet. The 1968 version with Leonard Whiting and Olivia Hussey. If you've seen it, you might be thinking, hey wait, that has nudity. And you're right. It gets to the bedroom scene and Romeo walks around for several minutes butt naked. Juliet rolls over and flashes the camera once. Here's where we get to that weird kid. He leaps out of his seat in anger. This is garbage. Teacher. Sit down. No, we just watched his butt for five minutes. She's just gonna flash a boob and that's it? Sit down. I will not. This is outrageous. He shoves his desk and storms out. We didn't see him again for several days. Look, kid, you gotta pick your battles. I don't think this was one to die for. <laughs> Admittedly, I haven't seen the film. Maybe my opinion would change if I had, but also probably not because I think Juliet's like supposed to be what? 12? 14? Depending on your interpretation. So uh, actually, no. I would not be a fan, in retrospect. Story 22. A guy I knew in high school had a mouse living in his car. Not a pet mouse or anything, just a wild mouse. He would intentionally leave food in the back seat for it. I almost didn't believe it until I saw the thing run under the seat when he opened the door. He also wore this full cow suit to school one time, which freaked an autistic kid who had a specific fear of cows. There was a lot of debate if he wore it specifically to freak the kid out, or if he just wore it to be weird. He's a youth pastor now. Story 23. The guy that growled at everyone and seriously wouldn't speak to a single person no matter how nice. They eventually came to school one day dressed in all black, and he has a huge chain, like one for an anchor on a big, big boat-sized chain around his neck. 
explore that for a while and we asked him why. He flung it off his neck and held it like a weapon and just went, that's why. And that's the first time anyone heard him speak. Pretty sure he's actually a really cool person now that grew out of that sort of thing. Story 24. In fourth grade, our class had a sleepover in school. We had a pool in our school and everyone went swimming. After that, it was time to change. All kids just grabbed their clothes and went changing in the bathroom. Except for one kid. He decided to take off his swim trunks in the bathroom and walk butt naked in front of everyone, boys and girls, to one of the classrooms to change there in front of all of us. Everyone saw him. It was like the walk of shame. They kept making fun of him and calling him names for weeks. Story 25. I don't know if they were the weird kid per se, but just someone I happened to encounter once in undergrad. One of our dining halls had a station that you could make yourself waffles at. So it had a container with batter in it for you to use with these little plastic cups for you to fill up and pour into the waffle iron. This was on the same counter right next to where the bagel station was, for reference. So one morning in between classes, I'm prepping a bagel for myself for breakfast. And there's two girls at the waffle station at the same time. I happen to overhear part of their conversation where one of the girls said something to the effect of, People think I'm weird, but I just don't get why, to her friend. Now, this was normally a totally valid thing to say. However, the statement was undercut immediately by her filling up the aforementioned cup with batter and then proceeding to drink it like it was some sort of waffle-flavored milkshake. And then she continued her conversation like she didn't just do the weirdest freaking thing I've ever seen. It's like five years later and I'm still in disbelief. Hey, some people eat the cookie dough. Her? She drinks the waffle batter. I don't want to see any judgment from you cookie dough eaters. Story 26. Wasn't the weird kid, but one of the craziest things in general that happened at my high school was this. It was the younger brother of one of my good friends. My friend was a grade higher than I was, and when he graduated, his younger brother was a freshman. Being a senior at my school, if you only needed a couple of credits to graduate, you weren't required to stay the whole day. I normally left for the day at like 11.30 or 11.45. I'm driving home to get ready to go to work for a couple of hours with my dad when I get a phone call from my mom. She is freaking the hell out, almost crying and hyperventilating. Once she calmed down, she was able to explain to me that there was a shots fired call that happened shortly after I left. Come to find out my friend's younger brother had gotten dumped by his girlfriend the day before, and he said he was going to do something stupid so that she would feel responsible. So he brought a pistol, his brother's pistol actually, the next day, and he emptied the clip into the school sports trophy case. Not quite sure whatever happened to him, but I know that he had to sit in a psych ward for almost two years. I don't think he ever had any criminal charges filed against him as he didn't hurt anyone, but that's the craziest thing that happened at my high school. You know, I know that OP said it's not really the weird kid, but it's kind of a weird kid thing to do, and definitely a nuts thing to happen. I'm glad he didn't turn the gun on anyone else, obviously. Just onto the trophy case is, uh, f fine, in the biggest air quotes possible, but I think this qualifies for weird kid behavior. High school breakups can be intense, man. Anyway, do you guys have any weird kid stories from your school? I'm sure you do. If you want to share them, throw them in the comments. I'll give them a read. But for now, thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a wonderful day or night wherever you are, and I'll see you in the next one.